Hey, I wanted to hop on here and just share a little bit about what's been going on with the baby these last few days. Um, it's been like kind of an emotional roller coaster. And if I look tired and if I sound tired and if I have puffy eyes, it's because I've hardly slept these last few days. And it's, like I said, it's been kind of an emotional few days. Um, so I guess I'll start with in my last video. I talked about at my anatomy scan when I was 20 weeks long, um, they found that pericardial effusion, which is that fluid around the baby's heart. And, you know, we were sent to get a fetal echo done, like a more elaborate ultrasound of the heart done at, I think it was 24 weeks along. And that's where they basically found out that, yes, the baby has a little pocket of fluid around the heart, but the function and the anatomy and, and um, kind of the blood flow within the heart and to and from the heart are all looked all normal. And so they didn't have any more concerns and they said, just keep, you know, following up with your OB to see if, to make sure that that doesn't change in a bad way. Um, and so I had my 28 week ultrasound because um, I do them every month for like growth because I'm high risk technically. And so my 28 week ultrasound was looked good. There was still a little pocket of fluid. They thought it looked a little bit less, which was good. And they didn't see any other issues. And the baby was growing great and all that. So that was, you know, uneventful. Excuse me. And then on Monday this week, I had my 30 week or almost 32 week ultrasound. And they did the normal measurements of all the parts of the baby and they looked at the heart for a little while and took some pictures. And normally what happens is they take all those pictures and then, you know, the tech does that. I think it's a, like a radiology tech. And then they, you know, show all the images to the doctor and the doctor looks it over and comes in and tells me, you know, things look good or, you know, whatever they see. And normally that takes maybe five minutes of once the tech goes out right there and five minutes later, something tells me, you know, whatever they saw. And this time it was like 20 to 30 minutes, which was weird, but I'm like, well, you know, doctors get busy, who knows? And my doctor walks in and she's like, she has a kind of a serious look on her face. And she's like, Tracy, I'm going to send you to get another fetal echo done. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, we, she's like, let me show you. And she pulled up one of the pictures that they took and <clears throat> she said it looks like the heart wall like the muscle wall of the heart along the right ventricle which is one of the four chambers of the heart looks thick like too thick compared to the other side the left ventricle and she's like you know and I could see it too I mean it was it was thicker in that image it looked thicker and she didn't really elaborate about what she thought that might mean, what she thought, you know, what that would mean as far as anything. She just was like, I want you to go get a fetal echo done soon. And I was like, I was kind of so shocked that like, I didn't even ask any questions. And I think I also knew that like, we didn't have enough information for her to even, you know, give me the worst case scenario or give me the best case scenario or anything in between. I don't think she would have probably even felt comfortable doing that because we just didn't have enough information, but just the way she presented it to me seemed very serious. And so I walked out of that appointment and I like walked into the bathroom. I was going to cry or at least try not to cry. And I just sat there for a little while and I did cry a little bit and I was like, thick and wall in the heart. It's normally your heart is trying to compensate for another problem. Like it's working too hard in that area to pump blood effectively to the rest of the body, basically. And that can be from a whole ton of different reasons, but none of them are really good. Um, it, you know, it often leads to like heart failure and that type of thing, which just felt so overwhelmingly heavy. And I kind of like pull myself together and I walk you know, go down the elevator, walk to my car. And I try to call Chad 
<clears throat> who actually happened to be home that day with Jackson. And I think his phone was on silent, so he didn't pick up. And I knew, I think, I think I started to like Google, which is never a good idea ever. But I started to Google, you know, thickened right ventricle wall uh, fetus. And everything that pops up is terrifying, um, of course. And I know full well that like some of this is valid information, some of it's not valid information. We don't have enough information. You know, I don't have enough information to even know what to search. And but the first few things that pop up that were from very credible sources, um, you know, like peer-reviewed medical journals, are saying things like. You know, this is like hypertrophy. I don't know how to say this word. Hypertrophy? Hypertrophy? It's basically a, um enlarged heart muscle wall. And when you see that in a baby, it was saying things like um, 80% will live to be one. And some decently high percent will need a heart transplant by age five. And then, you know, you continue and it's like, and some die in the womb, like, a, I don't know, a third of them or something like, it was just all terrifying. And I was so overwhelmed. And I called my mom on the phone and I got a hold of her. It was just like sobbing and explaining to her all of what I just explained. And it felt really terrifying. And then it was kind of like playing this game of like, well, that's some of the worst case scenarios, but we don't know what we're actually looking at. We don't have enough information. And I would kind of talk myself back down. And then it was like, but then I think of 10 other things that were terrible about the situation or potentially, and it was awful. Um, and I probably cried on the phone with my mom for a half an hour and just explaining kind of all the things I knew. And I feel like, sometimes like as a nurse, like, you know enough to scare the crap out of yourself, but not enough to like, be right, I guess is, the, is one way to say it. Um, it's like, you almost know too much, but not enough. And yeah, I just was awful. And I was trying so hard to calm myself down just so I could drive home. Cause I felt like I couldn't even drive at that moment. And then I get off the phone with my mom and I start driving home and I'm like two minutes from the hospital, you know, leaving the hospital and Chad calls me. And so I pull over and explain it all to him. And, you know, he's shocked and upset and I'm sobbing again. And I'm also saying like knowingly, like I don't have enough information. I don't actually know what we're dealing with. It could be a huge spectrum, but the scary stuff is really, really scary. And yeah, it, it was just so overwhelming. And, you know, I cried on the phone with him for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. And then got calmed down and drove home. And they, that day, the other, the hospital that I needed to get the fetal echo done at, they called me and scheduled it. And we got it scheduled for Wednesday of this week. So two days later which was good. I mean, that was relatively soon because I wouldn't want to wait weeks or something that would have been torture. And so, you know, that whole night, like Monday night, I feel like Chad and I were just like almost silent. Like we had talked when I first got home, you know, and hugged and I had cried and he was super supportive. And then it was kind of like, we just couldn't even talk about it anymore. It was kind of too heavy. And like, I know, like I, I filled Ellie in just a little bit. I didn't give her the full spectrum of anything, but just that they see something with the baby's heart. We're not really sure what it means. And, <clears throat> and I think she, you know, she understood to kind of a basic level, but I think she could just feel the energy that night of how heavy the air was because we were just so kind of down and quiet. Um, and that kind of continued to some extent on Tuesday because it was kind of like we just had to, we just felt like we had to get through the day. And like 
I would have times where I felt fine, not fine, but calm and like hopeful. And I'd Google a little more and be like, well, here's a scenario where babies can grow out of it or babies can live a normal life. But then you see like 10 more things that are like terrible, horrible, awful scenarios. And I just like multiple times throughout the day on Tuesday was crying and then calm and then crying and then calm. And yeah, it was just so draining, I guess. So Wednesday comes and my mom came over to watch Jackson. Ellie was in school so that Chad could go with me to the fetal echo this time because I was by myself, you know, my last ultrasound. And so, you know, they put you back in a room and it's just, it's just like any other ultrasound on your belly. Um, and it took, I don't know, 45 minutes or something. And the nurse did warn me that sometimes they'll have like, she'll, the tech or the nurse, whoever, I'm not sure who does it, but, um, you know, does a bunch of the pictures. And then sometimes the doctor will also come in and take a lot of his own pictures. And she warned me that that doesn't always mean, that doesn't mean that it's good, bad, or otherwise. They just have a checklist of all the things they need to verify. Excuse me, but they didn't do that. And my last fetal echo was just the one person. And then they gave me the results and it was good. This time she took a bunch of pictures and then the doctor did come in for another 15, 20 minutes to take more pictures, which was still a little nerve wracking, even though she had said that because it was different. And I think all day that day, I mean, Chad and I both were just like, like thought we would vomit sick, just so such a heightened anxiety, I guess. Um, and they put us, they do all those pictures, then they, and then they put us in kind of a private room. And she also warned me they do that with everybody. It doesn't mean good, bad, or otherwise. So we go into the room, and the doctor and a couple other people are already in there. And we sit down, and I could just feel. Chad and I like holding our breath for what whatever they told us. And we sit down and the cardiologist is smi- you know, kind of smiling. He's a really nice guy. And I, I don't even remember the first few things he said, but it sounded upbeat. And that initially was like, okay, like maybe this isn't like worst case scenario. That's good. And he was basically saying that the everything that they looked at this time is very, very similar to, to how it was last time at 24 weeks. They said the right ventricle wall is not thickened. It's basically the same as the left. They said the actual chamber itself, because there's four chambers of the heart, the ventricle like chamber is slightly bigger than the left ventricle chamber. But he said in the third trimester, that can be pretty normal. He's not at all concerned. He said, functionally, the heart looks great. All the blood vessel, like the blood flow through all the vessels to and from the heart look normal and great. And he doesn't really see any reason to be concerned. And like, as he get emotional just thinking about this, but as he's saying this, Chad and I look at each other and we are both trying really hard not to like completely sob. (laughs) And we did it, (laughs) but it was like, the biggest relief maybe of my life, truly. Um, and, you know, we kind of asked, like, why why did she think that she saw a thickened ventricle wall? And obviously, you can't, like, really answer that other than the chamber itself is a little bit bigger than the other side. And then the other thing I thought of is, like, She didn't, so, you know, when I had the ultrasound done, the tech did all of the pictures, you know, all the, all the pictures, and then showed it to the doctor, and the doctor didn't come in and do any of her own, like, scan, and so it could have just been a weird viewpoint, I guess, for the picture, that, that had she done her own scan, she may have been able to verify that it was or wasn't accurate, if that makes sense. We'll kind of never know. But we were so relieved that, like, as soon as we walked out of the actual, like, office, like, started crying and just were, like, it was just such a roller coaster of where we thought it, like, 
we might lose the baby or lose him so early or just have a very different life for him. Like he's probably fine. And there is still that little pocket of fluid. They're not at all concerned about that. They said they still think that is from when I was sick with parainfluenza and had like the high fever. And they said in their experience, most of the time, once these babies are born, like within a day of them being born, they that that fluid like reabsorbs into their body. And so they do want to do one more fetal echo. I don't know if it's called. A, it's not a fetal echo. It's just an echo on the baby once he's born, like day one, to just make sure that it's looking okay, see if the fluid is reabsorbed, see if there's anything else we need to address or do. But that's kind of it. And I was, I asked, I had so many questions, of course. And I was like, so you don't see any reason for them to pull the baby out early or to like need a C-section versus a, you know, a vaginal birth or any of that. And he was like, no, I see nothing that would indicate a need for any of that, which just felt like just a million pounds off of our shoulders. Um, and I feel like I'm still coming down from that like heightened anxiety. Clearly, I still I just I keep like taking these deep breaths and just like sighing like, OK. And then I kind of think back and I'm like. Because it's easy to say that now, like, was I just being dramatic? Like. Probably yes and probably no, like. I only had the little bit of information I had and I have some base knowledge around that, but certainly not with when it relates to babies. And I did even have the thought like, well, the, the picture could be inaccurate, but I did see it with my own eyes too. I could see exactly what she was seeing and I could see the look on her face and the way she spoke about like needing the echo right now. Whereas last time when they needed, they wanted me to do the fetal echo, it was kind of like, well, we can wait another four weeks and check on it or not. And this time it was like, I want you to go immediately. So it just felt so real, like this could be very bad. I also, I think in the last video I mentioned that I had had COVID. So they were kind of, you know, thinking that maybe, and I, my symptoms were super mild overall with COVID. So I was surprised at this, but they're like, affect babies that can do kind of all sorts of weird things. Like maybe this impacted the baby's heart which felt terrifying and i think when when you've had the kind of like health trauma i guess that i've had in the past with a million different things in my life it just is so triggering to think that something terrible could be happening and not not to me this time but to my baby um yeah, it was just so heavy. And I was just like praying the whole three days, like straight. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> like, I still feel like, like it's, I still almost feel like I'm in this like heavy emotional thing, but it's like, it's okay. So yeah, it's been a true roller coaster. I think I've, it, it has given us so much perspective. I guess that's one of the best things that came out of this is like so much of life could be so much worse and harder always. And the things that you think matter so much just don't. And we're just so grateful that he is okay. And yeah, I, we can't wait to meet him. So so yeah, that was our last few days <laughs> and I still just feel like exhausted. Like I hardly slept for like three days. And then even last night after knowing it's okay, I still woke up in the middle, middle of the night, like thinking about it and like going back through all of it and just still like coming down from how stressful and scary that was. Um, but yeah. So <clears throat> I'm 32 weeks and one day today and it's kind of crazy that it's, you know, the, the countdown is 
definitely on as far as when we're going to have him. So, yeah, just thought, I guess I just thought I'd come on you in. And honestly, like, I only told my mom and my sister and then Chad and Ellie about any of it, mostly because I just felt like I don't have the emotional bandwidth to have 10 conversations with people about what's potentially going on or not and like go through the emotions of the whole thing 10 times. And so I didn't even tell anyone else. So if you're finding out, don't, you know, <laughs> for one, there's nothing to find out, right? Cause like, it's okay. But I just didn't have the capacity to just share and share and share with this one. Cause it was too, it felt too painful for a bit there, but yeah. So it's all okay, <laughs> but it was so, so heavy there for a few days. So, yeah, just so grateful. Like, the most grateful right now. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> Thanks.